Hello traders, this is Rich from TradeSite. This is the market preview for the coming session. This is going to be for Wednesday, June 19th, 2013. Now this Wednesday is going to be the uh, release of the, uh, in, of the decision and the comments from the two-day Fed meeting that's been ongoing. So we could have a little extra volatility and see the uh, volume on the day kind of barbelled around the opening and uh, also uh, kicking back in in the, in the last third of the day after the uh, release of the uh, decision and the, uh, and the commentary. So uh, please be prepared for that. Today we had a, a, a very strong day where we're up on all three sides. The ES was up 11 handles, the NQs were up 23, and the Dow was up uh, about 140 points. Uh, internally the market was okay but not great. We're only plus 1,000 thousand issues on um, both sides. That's New York and, and uh, the NASDAQ side. So, uh, good day, but not but not spectacular because we didn't have uh, you know, really tr you know broad based strong market breadth. So the internals were 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 not as good as the uh, as the top line numbers. But let's get let's get down to business and take a look at the uh, the major futures contracts and how they look technically. All right, so here's a look at the ES futures. We uh, did pivot back above this recent range that we've been trapped in. We're still holding above the key four ace level and also the 50 DMA. We've used the 50 DMA twice now but haven't been able to penetrate it to the downside so that's definitely a coup for the bulls here at least in the short term as we pivot up and try and retest. A couple of things I want to point out as far as the uh, construction goes though we are now eight days up in the secret count uh, so we're getting uh, quite a bit closer to a 13 uh, exhaustion warning so we want to be on guard for that. That could come next week. Uh, the uh, MACD is gotten down near the zero line but hasn't crossed down below it to really release any downside momentum. So while we have had this little bit of a corrective activity, it hasn't followed through to the downside just yet. I think the MACD will be key on key on that uh, if that develops. So near term levels to the downside, the closest one is sixteen twenty five. That's going to be very important. And then down below that at about sixteen thirteen, sixteen fourteen is that fifty DMA. To the upside We've got the 5 ace level at, at uh, 1656 and above that are going to be the opens here on these last two candles, one and two here, these two candles. So that's going to be an important level if we can get back above that 1656. So the 1667 then will come and play to the upside in the ES. Here's the NASDAQ chart. NASDAQ chart is, is similar design but really is, is uh, much closer in the secret count. We're really just one candle away from getting that exhaustion warning. So if we retest and get a close above that 3001 level, we will get our seeker exhaustion and uh, be, be looking very aggressively to the downside for a rollover and ultimately taking out this uh, this 50 DMA. So for now, the 8 ace level at 29.68 and 3 quarters is key support that 3001 level, which, which is the uh, high of, I'm sorry, the close of candle 8 here on the uh, countdown phase is the near-term overhead and definitely the most important number on the chart right now. Now as far as the uh, total put call ratio, now we're taking a look at the internals. This is going into the uh, into the Fed meeting dead neutral as it often does. So uh, neither uh, overbought nor oversold as far as the uh, options go going right into this uh, into this uh, FOMC release. All right, here's a look at the 10-day the trend, which is neither overbought nor, or, nor oversold. It is a little bit closer to overbought than oversold. 0 0.85 is the key threshold there for overbought. There's plenty of room there before it gets, uh, gets over, oversold if the market does turn to the downside. But key thing is we're going into the meeting with a neutral reading. All right, folks, here's a look at the uh, cumulative advanced decline line. Uh, we were plus a thousand issues on New York and about the same on NASDAQ. So we're uh, kind of climbing back up here, but we're still below the, uh, the re let me just remove this, reposition this rather. We're back up, uh, trying to climb back up here, but that trend line's still broken and still negative. NASDAQ has the same uh, same posture, really just trading trading sideways here. NASDAQ does have a little bit more relative strength. It's closer to the high than the recent low, but uh, certainly the uh, the uh, New York Stock Exchange side is the one that you want to focus on, and this uh, this is not looking too healthy. Okay, now as far as the uh, S&P divided by TLT, this key ratio, this one is back up to range high. Potential uh, 
three touches here, and as we know in all technical analysis, there's no such thing as a triple top. So got to be on guard for this. Uh, we're back up into that regression channel, and a breakout above this triple top could be a stampede to put risk back on. So we got to be on, on, you know, aware of that. And there's plenty of room to move to the upside uh, before we would uh, get anywhere near the, uh, the the channel high. So at least as as, as far as this goes, uh, the S&P divided by the TLT. So uh, equities versus bonds, we definitely have uh, room to go to the upside here and could have an explosion. Uh, and risk being put on if we can break above this triple top. If not, uh, this could be uh, proved to be a formidable, formidable, and important uh, level on this chart, where the uh, bulls just just refuse to pay these prices for any additional uh, equity exposure. Okay, here's our multi-sector um, chart. You can see that uh, all the all the risk-on asset classes did did have different bumps here. The socks. Uh, which is the blue was definitely the strongest on the day of of the uh, on a relative basis. Uh, BKX the green line and the BTK the red line was also uh, positive. And you see they took more, squeezed a little more juice out of the uh, XAU. It's back down to that, uh, back down to this low area at the bottom of this uh, this recent range. All right, here's a look at the individual sectors. I'll sort these from uh, from best to worst. Socks was Top Gun, plus uh, 1.6 percent. Just keep in mind here that we are 12 days up now in the uh, secret count, so potentially just one candle away from uh, recording that exhaustion warning. BTK was also very strong. Good performance out of the NASDAQ in general today. BTK was up 1.2%. Broker-dealers uh, were also fairly decent today. Uh, laggard, obviously, w like we talked about, was the uh, XAU. So the metals and mining, mining stocks were, were weak. Housing was also lagging uh, fairly dramatically today as well. Still trying to uh, trying to get its feet uh, get its feet planted back there. Let's take a look at a couple of these charts now. Here's the XAU. We'll take a look at this first. Now you can see that in the um, in the secret, we're now 12 days down. We're into the uh, qualifying qualifier where we're trying to get a print where we close below candle eight here. Here's candle eight. If we close below that, uh, we're going to get that exhaustion warning. Keep in mind that exhaustion, exhaustion warning, if we do get it, it's going to be very lateral and really just based on time more than price because we haven't had very much extension to the downside here. These are the ones that do, that are a little bit more prone to fail than the others. So keep keep that in mind here. This 100 level that is a zero waste level on the Murray Math Box, and that's a very, very strong level. Keep in mind that if we do pivot back up here in the XAU, uh, we're probably going to... Uh, break above the zero line, which should be very easy to do, and you can see it'll be the first time this year that the uh, that it's been able to do that, and could uh, very easily collect a lot of uh, short-term momentum in a very short amount of time. Pharmaceutical index um, has definitely been very much in play. Just want to point out that we're nine days up now on this little seeker run to the upside here, so this is usually a, a spot where we'll want to pause or perhaps turn back to the downside. The uh, OSX oil services were uh, fairly strong again today. Uh, if we do continue to the upside here, I just want to point out that this static trend line will probably come into play. That's 264, call it. The coming coming in just a little bit before this 8 ace level at 265 and a half. So you've got a level there that's at the high from this uh, this number three candle, which is the the high print of this one through nine uh, setup phase to the downside. On to the decent looking sectors today. BTK outperformed, but it's still basically just range bound here. Uh, we are still below on a closing basis. The 10 EMA and the 50 DMA MACD has crossed below the zero line, so, so there are definitely still some negatives uh, weighing on the BTK. SOX index, real feature here is that we had a new high close on the move. Yay, clap. But we did produce our 13 seeker exhaustion warning. So we're probably going to see some uh, some profit taking in the uh, in the stock sector in the next couple of uh, sessions. Keep in mind that this this 484 is a very strong level. That's the plus two waste level on the Murray Math Box. So that's going to be key overhead. The risk level that we're set, that's set up from the uh, from the exhaustion warning is coming in at about 488 and a half. So that's going to be another level that will come into play if this can continue to the upside. Keep in mind that that risk level that just printed today off of that secret exhaustion warning. Uh, it's kind of like a stealth level. 
and is very much uh, a real level that a lot of folks aren't going to be aware of. So definitely keep that keep that uh, keep that in mind as we go forward. To the downside here for the Sox, key, key support is obviously eight ace here at four sixty eight and three quarters. If we lose that, we're also going to wind up closing below the ten EMA, which will which will flip the trend to short term negative and change this exhaustion warning into an outright sell signal. So a couple things to keep in mind there. As far as uh, oil goes, oil was uh, trading fairly decently today, but it was still inside of the previous day's range after printing this nine bars up. We expected it to take a little pause here at least, uh, and that's exactly what it's doing right now. So there is a possibility we could release out of this pattern to the upside, and if we do, then the 8 ace level at 100 will be the uh, next target. To the downside, the rising 10 EMA and the 6 ace level coming in between 96 and 96 and 7 ace are going to be the uh, going to be the support levels for the coming session. All right, folks, we'll just keep in mind tomorrow we've got Fed Day. Be on guard for that barbelled uh, volume, volume heavy in the morning, later into the, the meeting, and then picking up a little bit afterwards. Uh, a lot of times with the Fed meeting, when it get when when it does get released, you just don't really get the true move until the subsequent session. So if you don't see anything really happening uh, tomorrow, don't get frustrated and be prepared to uh, to make some money on Thursday. All right, folks, as always, thanks for listening. This has been Rich for TradeSite.